Hi guys, it's Horsey Steph, and today I am back with another product review for our Sunday vlog. I think you guys really enjoyed my product review of the Lumiere breastplate that I did a few weeks ago, maybe even up to a month ago. Gosh, it's been a while. I don't actually remember. I'll leave a link in the description box down below of that review. But it seems like you guys enjoyed that, so I figured I'd do another one, and this time I'm going to be reviewing girths. So both of my horses have kind of high-end, expensive, specialized girths, so I figured I'd take a chance to kind of show you both of them, tell you what I like, don't like, etc., and why I picked these girths for my horses. If you guys could go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for future videos, that would help me out a ton. So the first girth we're gonna look at is London's girth. I have had this for a little bit over a year now, and I have just been loving it. So London first switched to a kind of specialized girth, uh, you know, eons ago. When I first really started riding him, I had a lot of issues with his girth rubbing. I originally had purchased just a used short leather dressage girth for him since I was putting him in my dressage saddle and I didn't have a dressage girth that fit. So I found this used, you know, nice, good quality dressage girth that was super tiny and fit him great and it gave him horrible rubs. So I put a cover on it thinking, well, leather does rub. I don't tend to use leather girths for that reason. And I put a nice cover on it thinking, oh, this will solve all of my issues. This should be, you know, super simple. And uh, yeah, it actually made things much, much worse having the cover on it. It was even worse than the plain leather girth. So that's where I began my girth journey with London. I ended up landing on a mohair string girth, which I used forever on him. And when I went through my phase of riding a Western, because that was the only saddle I had that fit, I also rode him with the mohair string girth. And that worked great because they're very calm in Western. They're very easy to find. However, I never loved my English one. The biggest thing for me was that it had no elastic and I love elastic. To have no elastic on either ends was just really rough on me. Um, I missed it all the time. And then I also felt like I could never really get the mohair clean like I wanted to. It had leather, I mean, I still have it. It has leather on both ends. And so I just, I always felt like it was dirty. I couldn't clean it. Um, wasn't the most comfortable looking thing to me. And I couldn't tighten it that much because if I really got it snug like I would like it to, it would pinch just a little bit. So I thought, you know what, he really needs a new girth and the only thing that reliably works for London is sheepskin. So I set out to find a sheepskin girth that would work great for him. I settled on this girth. I'm gonna show this to you. It is a massive, so massive that I can barely fit it in the screen, a uh, short stud girth because he does still have a monoflap. Both of my horses do have monoflap jump saddles. I love my monoflaps. So they both have short girths. I decided to get a stud girth for London because I kind of thought this is like the one girth I'm going to get for him that will hopefully last the rest of his lifetime. And I have studded him in the past. I do have a pair of stud hoof boots for him, which I've used for things like being on gravel and trail riding and whatnot. Um, I don't think I've done much like arena riding with them, but in the back of my mind, I was thinking it's possible that I will in the future jump this horse with studs. And so having a stud girt just seemed like a good idea. On our circuit, a lot of people jump with studs. It's very common, especially in the winter when the ground can be a little bit wet. The GGT can get a little bit slippery, and so most people are studying for our jumper ring. And so I don't know if I'm gonna stud him or not. I'm kind of leaving that up in the air. I am planning on studying Lucy this year in the hind, not the front. Um, but I just figured like this is the one girth he's gonna get I might as well get a stud girth and then the other thing I love about the stud girth is because it does have such a big area 
it's gonna spread out the pressure a lot better than like kind of a skinny normal girth and I thought he would really appreciate that because London really does not like pressure points anything that involves a pressure point he's like oh my god this is gonna be horrible so um that was kind of my thought process with it and I liked this particular one not only because of the price point Lumiere really delivers quality leather sheepskin etc products for a very good price so that was one thing I bought this for I think 340 um, something similar to that at least uh, it's been a while and it has this leather this is all leather nice high quality leather and then the sheepskin velcros off and I also have a white sheepskin piece that I can put on for like showing so I bought it in like a package of the black leather black sheepskin and white sheepskin you can customize those packages they sell white black and brown sheepskin as well as black and brown girths so lots of options I obviously have a black saddle so I thought the black on the black would be great for schooling and then the white's just gonna kind of stick out a little bit and be a little bit nicer for showing overall I'm really happy with this girth I love the ease of cleaning you can just take that sheepskin off throw it in the washing machine I've washed it a couple times now with milk which is a special detergent for sheepskin. And it's worked great, the milk gets it super clean. He's not allergic to the milk, which is great because I was a little concerned about that. Um, and it is, it's elastic on both ends. So you get all this elastic here. There we go, you can kind of see it in the camera. And then it also has these roller buckles on both sides. Nice little keeper so your girth doesn't move around. And then if your girth straps were really long, you could shove them in through here. I like to buy my short girths on the long side so they go, you know, pretty high up. So I do have a fair amount of tail on the end of my billets, just because I feel like that distributes the pressure better. But overall, I love this girth. I love everything about it. Um, and it does also have this nice, clip in the middle to make it really easy to attach your breastplates, which obviously I do use this with their breastplate actually, the Lumiere Anka breastplate, which I already reviewed. So I mean overall fantastic quality, love the girth. It is a little dirty now because I don't clean my tack very often, but still I mean you can tell it's in really good shape, it's great quality. This sheepskin is really nice and fluffy, um, I had no complaints about it for him. So the problem I did run into with this breastplate is I did try to use it on Lucy as well. Um, I had a lot of issues last summer into the fall with rubbing on Lou. And some of that is she gets really sensitive to like heat rashes. She gets them really easily. So she was getting a heat rash in her elbow and the girth was just irritating that. So I put her in my mohair girth thinking it's a little low profile and mohair is supposed to breathe really easily. That was a disaster. I switched her to this sheepskin girth thinking sheepskin's really soft. Hopefully that will help. Oh my God, the sheepskin was like the worst option. And eventually I figured out that some of the problem is Lucy is very petite. She's very narrow. And while this girth does fit her, I could get her saddle plenty tight with it. It just, it tended to get up in her elbows because this center plate is really quite big. It's very wide. And so her narrow chest was like hitting in here. This kind of concavity they have for their shoulder really wasn't working for her because this plate is just too wide for her chest. I mean, this was like her entire belly and kind of going up the side. So with London, you know, he's a more normal proportion, normal size horse. He's not huge, but like for the girth size, I think he's a very normal horse. This cutout provides sufficient, plenty of space for his elbows. Something I was worried about with him when I got this girth, because I know he's picky about that kind of stuff. But plenty of space, I've never had any rubbing. I mean, you can see there's like, a little bit of indentation on this where 
you know, just this fluffiness kind of gets rolled a little bit sometimes while I work him, but definitely no like matting down or any severe wear here because he's really not hitting this. But Lucy was hitting through this sheepskin into the leather every time I rode her with this. And then it's also, it is quite thick. Like you look at the profile, this is a lot of material. So it does kind of stick out from their side quite a bit, which when you're thinking about pinching in the elbows is also kind of a concern, especially for a really fine boned smaller horse. And while Lucy is 16 too, she is all legs. She's very narrow. She's very petite, has basically no bone. I mean, she is just like the supermodel of horses, just real skinny and petite. So this girth was just, it was too big for her. So I ended up getting her her own girth a few months ago, and um, I've been really happy with it. I decided not to go with Lumiere just because they don't have a ton of different options. I was concerned if I went with like their regular girth instead of their stud girth, it would still be so thick that it would still rub her shoulders. So I really wanted to like think out of the box, what is the best option I can get her that's gonna provide great shoulder relief, and really gonna be designed for a girth that tends to slide forward into her elbows. Because the thing that tends to happen with her tack, and I did get her saddle, you know, custom fit to her, but you know, it, does, it doesn't change her conformation, which does make saddle fit tricky, as well as just keeping a saddle stable tricky. That's why I've always, always, always ridden her with a breastplate. So it tends to happen with her as the girth likes to slide forward and the saddle slide back. So you kind of have them on top and they do this over time. And the breastplate does help the saddle sliding back, but the girth was still wanting to drive forward with that breastplate on keeping the saddle forward. So it wasn't, you know, a, a breastplate's not going to eliminate girth movement really. It did help the saddle movement a lot, but only the saddle. So I looked up and found like what are great options for horses that have trouble with their girth sliding forward and what can I get her it's gonna provide so much room for her armpits so we have no issues with that rubbing in the future because this is a problem I've had with her before. The first summer I've like really, really worked her. So first time I'm really running into like, oh man, I can't ride her because of her elbows. But I mean, I've had heat rash in her elbows um, many, many times. Uh, like I said, it's a, it's a repeating issue. So anything I can do to make sure that the girth doesn't play into that, I need it to do. Cause I just, you know, it's a problem. It's a huge problem to have the girth running into those elbows. So I ended up settling on an EA mats girth. What I like about EA mats, again, the sheepskin, I love sheepskin. I feel like the breathability is really superior. It's just, it's a great product, sheepskin. And so I really did want sheepskin, although I would have entertained other things. Just from a breathability point of view, I thought it was a great option, especially for a horse that gets heat rash. And also like looking at your kind of high end specialized girths, you don't have a lot of choices that aren't leather or sheepskin. And leather, as we all know, can cause rubbing issues. And on a mare with, you know, thin skin that I'm having rubbing issues with seemed like a bad idea. So I went with the EA Mats Asymmetric Girth, which is specifically designed for horses where their girth tends to slide forward and pinch their elbow. And it's also a very like thin, low profile girth that can kind of stay out of the way of everything. So I really went the opposite with her with this girth. With London, I went with like, you know, a big stud girth to distribute pressure, protect his belly from potential studs. With Lou, I went thin, low profile, stay out of the way, don't run into her elbows because those are the issues I've been having with her. So this is the girth I got from her. I bought this from Pink Equine. They allow you to completely customize your EA Mats products, which was super fun. So this is actually a cloth girth with the sheepskin um, sides and I could customize it. So do kind of whatever I want. EA Mats has a billion different options. I ended up just doing like a quilted black because you know, nice, kind of stays out of the way. Um, black sheepskin and then I added this fun fuchsia trim because you know, all my tack is pink and black. So I thought that's like a fun thing. 
They do sell this girth in leather. It's definitely more pricey in leather. And then also just from a cleaning point of view, I thought, you know, the cloth is great. It's super easy. I can throw it in the washing machine. And this does, it unvelcros. Um, so you have like the cloth girth and then you have this cover for the sheepskin. So I can throw the cover in the washing machine, wash it with the melt. I could throw the girth in the washing machine or just hose it off, however you wanna wash your cloth girths. So super easy to clean, super great on that aspect. And you know, a little more cost effective than the leather. And then this skirt also features double elastic. Um, it's kind of hard to tell because it is like kind of covered, but it does have the elastic and roller buckles, um, places to put your billet so they don't slide. I really like it. I mean, overall, the difference in thickness, it is much thinner. Um, you still have this really great concavity to it. And you can see that the center of this is a lot, you know, kind of narrower. It doesn't have the bulk compared, so let me put these two together. So when you look at, at both of these together, just the, I don't know that you guys can really see that. Just here, this is a better angle. Just the bulk of the center section on Lucy's girth is so much better. This section is a lot narrower than on London's, and then it's also narrower this way, so it really stays back. And then because of this asymmetric shape you have, it really encourages lots of space for those elbows, keeps the girth back and doesn't let it ride forward, which I really appreciate. And then it still comes with a little D-ring, no clip. Um, I'm honestly not that upset about that because with Lou, if you watched my breastplate review, you know I have tons of issues with my breastplates always being too large for her on the bottom. So having a ring versus a clip just makes this a little more low profile, um, which works. What I ended up actually doing to fix my breastplate because it was a little bit too big on the bottom for her is instead of using this ring, um, and just clipping the breastplate here. I actually ran a piece of paracord from this ring um, under this breastplate and created a little loop here so that my breastplate attaches here instead of up here, which just took up that extra space beautifully and solved that issue. So that was a, that was a great way of just kind of making it even a little smaller and super easy and clean way of doing it. So overall, I'm very happy with both these girths. I think they both have really different values. If you're just looking for like a nice high quality leather sheepskin girth, go with the Lumiere. It's really cost effective, great quality. It's something I just love about their products. However, if you're looking for more of like a specialized girth to really solve a problem, EA Mats does have a range of girths with all different options for different needs. And you can look up, they have um, online like a list of all their girth types, why you would use them, what benefits they have. And that's how I settled on this asymmetric girth. And it did everything as promised. It is exactly what they told me it would be. It really stays back and out of the way, has no tendency to drive forward. Honestly, if anything, if you leave it too loose, it will start to slip back a little bit. And I mean loose, like put a fist in it, the girth's not touching your side. It will slide back just a little bit, but I was never having that with Lou before I started using this asymmetric girth. So definitely like don't just buy an asymmetric girth for any horse. They make regular girths too. They make them in leather as well. I just thought the cloth was a little better option. If you have any interest in getting the EA mats, definitely go online, figure out which specific EA mats girth is going to suit your horse best. And then pink equine is a great option in terms of just they allow you to customize everything. You can get all the fun colors, so, so many options on that aspect. And you know, I love options, I love color. I wish I could have put a pop of pink on my Lumiere girth too. Um, but again, you know, it's not a requirement, but like given the opportunity, I could have bought this like a stock version of this asymmetric girth in like black or something, but like 
if I can customize it. And again, I'm not paying a ton of money just for a custom. It was pretty much the same cost as buying a standard in stock version. So definitely gonna do that. And just so many fun options, you can coordinate it with whatever your tack is. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this product review. I don't do a ton of product reviews, but I am trying to put them in every, you know, month or two, just kind of something cool that I have and I really enjoy. I have some ideas for future product reviews I would like to do. And I might create like a playlist of product reviews in the future once I have a little bit more of them. But for now, I'm just gonna link my product review of the Lumiere breastplate in the description box if you guys wanna check that out. And again, like, I don't want to encourage you to go buy expensive tack. Obviously, I have like quite the collection of expensive tack at this point. But if you're gonna spend the money on expensive tack, I think it's worth, you know, having a product review and just knowing what other people are thinking of it. So you're not like going cold. I didn't know anyone that had the mirror when I first bought this girth from them. And I was just like crossing my fingers and praying. That there really weren't a lot of reviews, like written reviews either at their products. So it's just like, I hope I'm not making a mistake. I hope the quality is great. And I've been really impressed. And of course, EA Mats is like a brand that's been around forever. I wasn't worried about quality there, but I wasn't really sure if the asymmetric growth would work. Cause again, I couldn't find a lot of information on whether, you know, people had bought it, used it for that purpose and liked it. So hopefully you're finding this review helpful. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. And I will see you guys all tomorrow with a horse fails video. Since tomorrow is Monday, today is Sunday of course. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend and staying dry out there. As the groundhog did say, we'd have six more weeks of winter. Yay, you know how much I love winter. All right, I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Bye.